Welcome back, this is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks and today we are going to continue to look at the challenges from inside of Katherine Jones's CF Design School, her excellent course teaching you how to not only design uh, funnels and funnel pages but also how to use click funnels in order to do it. And so this was one of the assignments that she had and that's to simply hack this and basically make it look as close to the original as possible by rebuilding it inside of click funnels. So the first thing you want to do whenever you look at a page like this is first off just kind of take a, a gander and see what it looks like here. And we have uh, basically an image up here at the top. We have so we basically have one wide section here. We got one three column section and then we have another wide section and another wide section down here at the bottom or this is maybe even one section altogether down here at the bottom you could build it out that way so here is my representation of this it's pretty close now you're going to see these all stacked on top of each other because i got a little something to show you at the end and i and i just left the css alone but um, so here's, here's the best way to really start on a, on a hack like this besides just starting to get building is you want to start grabbing off the images. So this one right here, you can just grab a hold of this, drag it over, drop it into your desktop. Same thing with this here. And now these here are not images. They did something really kind of funky on here where they use some sort of counting system. And that's definitely something you're not going to build inside of ClickFunnels or realistically anywhere else. If you're WordPress, Kajabi, anything else, you're not going to do whatever they did there. You're just going to grab some images and, and our icons or whatever you got and put them in there. And then uh, down here, um, this we're not going to build at all. Technically, you could probably build it using the survey element inside of ClickFunnels. But again, the purpose for doing these is just to start to begin to understand design, to understand layout, understand how things look good together. And so this really doesn't add anything to our learning at this point. And then, like I said, down here we have a, another image right there. We got our social media icons. And we have a row that's going to have a little thin line at the top and the bottom. Now you may not be able to see it on your screen, but there's also a textured background in here. And we gotta grab that off. So what I like to do is go right click and to inspect, and that will open it up inside the developer tools, or you can do right click, inspect, go to view page source. But for me, I think it's a little harder to find it there. So inside of here, we're just going to come into our body is probably where we're going to find that image. And yeah, here it is right there. And what we're going to do then is right click on that image. We're going to copy that link address. We're going to open it up in a new page. And then all you're going to do is you're going to right click on this and you're going to copy, uh, I'll save the image as it'll save it to your desktop and then you're going to upload it into the click funnels, uh, image editor. So like I said, here's my version here is, oops, here is their version. So mine, Ooh, I see here, I should have made that font a little bit bigger there. But again, that's one thing is just kind of go back and forth and just work on it. And again, it's about learning, uh, the the concepts behind design and learning how to then build it inside of a builder like this So let's just go into what I have set up here And so I have a well let's start off with the background. So we go background right there We're gonna grab that textured element. We're gonna drag it and drop it into the image editor inside of click funnels and then we're going to set that to repeat and let me just turn it off from repeat so we got no repeat and now it should just be, yeah, it's just really tiny up here in the corner. So we'll go back into our background and we will return that Pete back on. That was, that was almost a sentence. We turn that Pete back on. Okay. So, um, so then we got a row inside here. It's going to be a full width row and we got a transparent background on it, a little bit of paddings and that is it. So inside of there, again, we drug this off earlier as an image. And so all we're going to do is we're going to put that back inside as an image. And it's such a large image, we don't have to set a width or anything. It's because it's going to take up the whole width of that section. And then here we just have a text element. And as I said, what I had in there clearly was a little too small. So let's just bump that up a little bit. 
and then we grab the text color off of the original. So again, it's something like this. I would come in, I would go inspect this. And now one of the problems you're always going to have is that you're not necessarily going to have the same fonts as they have when they're building it. But in this case here, they have open sans for the font. We got a font size of 50 pixels, but they have a font weight of 600. Whereas in ClickFunnels, you only have font weight of 400 or 700 unless you upload a custom font that is a different size. So obviously 700 in bold and then the 400 is your normal size. And here we can grab the text color by clicking on that little box. Click there, copies out the, the color of the text and then you can just come back into the element itself and just paste that into, let's just click on there first and paste that in wherever you have your text element right there. And so that was 50, so let's increase it a little bit more. And then we had 30 margin at the top, 1.3 EM, and that's pretty much it for that element. So now for the second section here, um, I guess I built it all inside of one big section. So I got two sections total here, okay? It's been a while since I built this. So we have a three-column row. In the top, this here, we have some text. We'll get to this in a minute. Right here in the middle is just an image that, again, we pulled off of the original. No special settings on there. And then over here, we just start off with a text element. Another text element right there. And it looks like this is red, so I suspect what I did, let me see here, so I must have set the, the font color to red and then made the bold color black. Yep, so that's what I did there. So the, the little asterisks will be in red and the bold will be the dark right there. And then we're just going to put in our input elements and you see I don't have any of them set here, but you would want to, at least on the email one, you're definitely gonna to wanna to set that to your email address because an email is always required and then of course you put in the rest of them as well and let me see here otherwise I don't know if I picked a theme I guess so simple clean input is what's highlighted there and then with the advanced so we're going to line left corners five pixels uh, so probably want to turn that off submit on enter we want to turn that off because we want it to be submitted when they hit the download down here uh, background color of white, no icons and everything because we, again, we're trying to make it as close as we can to this without having to use a whole bunch of CSS at this point. That'll be for later trainings. So now let's uh, take a look at the important stuff over here, which is the harder thing to do, which is these elements right there. So let's open this up and just look at what type of an element is this. So it is a image list element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a new one and we're going to click the plus. We're going to come all the way down to the bottom is where it is. And here is our image list element. And first thing you're going to see is it comes in with three of them. And so we'll click on this and we'll just take out a couple because we just want one per line. Okay, now we won't do anything with the text at this point, but we're going to need to come in here and change out what this icon is. So we're going to click on our gear. We're going to go in, and it says it needs an icon with image of 32 pixels. Well, I didn't have any that were 32 pixels necessarily, so I just grabbed some images, and I'll show you how to work with that. Once we grab an image, I just need to find where they all were again. So I'm going to come down here and grab a hold of image number five because we had four up until this point and it goes in there and looks really nice. Here's the problem. It doesn't look really nice. I had to do some CSS in here to make it look nice. So let's just come in and what we're going to do is we're just going to put in a slash there to kill the CSS because what I'm using here on all of these is images that are really big. And we only want them to be, it says, it says in the instructions when you're putting it in, to have it be 32 pixels. Well, 32 turned out to be a little bit small. I needed to go to 42. But that's what we needed to do in this case. So we just use a couple lines of CSS code to come in here and tell that icon what it should look like. Now, in order to find, uh, let me go back here to the CSS and just show you this. What we need to find here is L bullet list. Yeah, L bullet list, L I. So let me show you where that comes from and what that means. So I'll just click on this. So this is the one that I built. 
So here we have that first element, so the one that you see there highlighted in blue. Inside of there is a unordered list, UL is an unordered list, and it has a class of L bullet list. And so that's a way that we can identify all of these elements because we don't want to have to come in and do each one. Because you see here, this has temp list image 89885. The next one is actually it's called listing 33949. And so you had to pull out all four or five of these, but we want to just do it all in bulk. And so as long as we don't have any other bulleted lists on this page, we can just use this class of L bullet list. And then what we really want to target is the list item after that. So we target the LI, and that way we know exactly where this is because that LI is going to be the image itself, that little image right there. So then back into the CSS, and let me skinny my page up a little bit, and we'll take that out. And now let's just change a few things here. We will kill everything at first. So you see here at first the background size was huge. I don't know. It's probably at least a hundred pixels, maybe, maybe much more than that. And so we're just going to say background size for that element. We just want that to be 42 pixels wide because that's what we're affecting here is that is the background of that, um, that L I. And in fact, in this case here, I don't need that arrow there either. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the padding left. So we're going to take that out and it's going to put our padding back in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to background position this. So because we know this is a background, we want to position it. And we're saying we want to go nine pixels to the left. So the first number is always your horizontal or your right and left. So we're going to go nine pixels left and then we're going to go up I'm sorry, six pixels to the left, and then we're going to go up nine pixels because the second number is either either up, down, or horizontal, and or not horizontal, vertical. And so now we will do that, and it'll put it right back in place. And you see here, if we take that out, the padding left, it pushes it way over to the side, and we didn't want that. So apparently the, the set padding in here is much greater than 40, and so we're actually reducing it down to 40 at that point. Point. So that's it, three lines of CSS code to be able to put that in there without, I mean, I said the machinations they went through to do it on theirs was uh, pretty incredible. So, or you could just do even something better and actually just find like a 32 pixel icon and put it in there. I didn't have any available. This is a way you can use a much bigger image and uh, be able to put it in there. So um, that's it for this. Uh, again, a standard button right there. Let's just click on that real quick. See what we have in there. Uh, just red background color, white text, 16 pixels. Anything else here? Fluid display block, some padding or some spacing, vertical and horizontal. Got a box shadow of here of one pixel inset and a little bit of a border, a little bit of corners and it is aligned to the left like the original was. So now down in our bottom section here, we have a row and just a two column row. And you're gonna see here this uh, text is going behind that, uh, that divider. And so let me show you why that is. And it's because I put in margin left of minus 40 pixels. So it's gonna push it over to the left. The only reason I did that was because that's just made it go over there a little closer like that one was and otherwise you just have an image element right there so we'll turn that css back on and that's what it looks like now here's the uh, interesting and cool part about this and the second way i'm going to show you of doing this i actually just discovered the other day by accident but it's always an issue of how do you take a whole bunch of icons and line them all up side by each. And so what we're going to do is just do a little bit of code to make that happen. The first thing we're going to do is using what is known as Flexbox. So let me just take this out. And what you're going to see as I pull up on this, 
These are little bookmarklets that I built just to make it easier for me to get in and out of the CSS and also to be able to, to size it a little bit. Um, so what we got here is we're going to say, let's go into this column. So that column is represented by this right here. So we come down here is the column. We're going to come in and we're going to grab the CSS ID selector, which always comes along with the class of call inner. And we're going to open up that CSS again. And so what it's saying here is we want to display flex. It's also known as flex box is what they call it in general. But you use the term display of flex. Other displays that you could have, you could have display block or display none. There's, there's probably a dozen of them. Um, so you're going to display flex and then we're going to say flex wrap, no wrap because we don't want it wrapping down to the next line at all. So if we take this off, all it's going to do, well, maybe it isn't going to do it. I had done it earlier. Huh, that's funny. Let me take that out. Um, okay, so maybe I don't need the flex wrap. I thought, I didn't think I did, and then it wasn't working, so I put it in and then began working. So we'll see. I'll leave it out for now. We'll see what happens. And then what, how you get this really to work is you have to tell it you want the width to change. So if we... In this case here, hmm, that's another thing that's very interesting. I expected that when I took out that width, that it would have killed the whole thing and made it back to full, full width again, but it didn't. So let me see what's going on here. Let me take that out. Okay, so that kills that. And then let me take out the width here. And let me go back and turn off display and see what it looks like. Okay, so it's still doing the same thing. Well, that's interesting because I really thought I had to make it a narrow width in order to be able to get everything close to each other. So let's take out the flex. Okay, so that didn't change anything. Hmm. So either way, then I just put in some margin here and it says margin of zero. When you do a shortcut like this is margin zero is top bottom and then the 15 is left right. And so we can take that out as well. And then it's just going to smoosh everything closer together. And in this case here, because I had, let me see here, I had the width of 30 pixels. We probably then would want to make this more like, uh, let's just make this 30 total. That way it'll spread it out a little bit further. That might be a little too much. Let's just say 25 on either side. And so there it looks pretty nice. But again, I'm really kind of surprised I don't need that 30. But here's the other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to kill that bit of CSS and you see everything lines back up on top of each other again. Here's the way I discovered the other day of doing it. And some people will tell you not to use float. I agree with them in a lot of cases, but in a case like this, I don't think float is going to cause a huge problem. So all we're going to do here is we're going to each one of these elements has the CSS class of L icon element wrapper and I will show you that right here let me just right click and inspect this so right here is what I'm talking about L icon element wrapper so again we can affect all of them by calling that class as long as we don't have any other icons on this page so you always have to remember that is you can't do this if you have a whole bunch of other icons or you could do it, but you would also have to identify the column it was in. So you'd say something like column full 107 and then L, L icon element wrapper after it. And then you could target it that way. And so here is where we definitely have to set a width of 30 pixels. And now again, we don't. I'm wondering if there's just something going on in here that's making that happen. Because you should have to set the width. So let me click on float. Once you take out the float, then it changes it. And then we have our margin again. And let's just go margin of 25. That's going to make it too wide now. So let's just, uh, just make it margin of 20. And it'll spread it apart. Because one of the things in here is I have the settings in here of the column width set down to 40 on the width and that might be let me just let me just test this here as long as we're doing this because initially I did not have that set but you have to do it in order to get it to center that's where the problem comes in is it doesn't want to center itself otherwise because we're doing a float left 
So it pushes it all the way over to the left hand side. So now let's go back in, leaving that at 100% width. Let's go back in here to, let's just kill this. Let's take out this one. And flex wrap. Yeah, so no matter what, we need to leave this down here at 40% in order to easily get that into to line up in the middle. But it appears, and I always love it when I'm in the middle of these things recording it and all of a sudden I learn something. So we don't need the flex wrap here and we don't need the width. So that, uh, like I said, that is uh, surprising to me because every time in the past I've used it, I always had to put in the width. So either way, um, like I said, you get to learn right along with me on some of these because things just change every time I'm in here. So that is it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Have a great day.